Hello everyone and welcome to Linux Desktop December Part 11 where I'll be looking at the Deepin Desktop environment. So Deepin Desktop comes from the Linux distro Deepin, funny old thing. It's a Chinese distro, it's translated into other languages though, and the desktop has been packaged up and is available in other Linux distros as well. It uses HTML5 and WebKit, but it's also a very fancy distro. I've done a proper review of the operating system and one thing I kind of didn't really like so much about it was that it still has quite a bit of chinglish in it. But if you can overlook that and uh, concentrate more on how it looks itself, just the graphics, yeah, it's quite interesting. I'll start with taking a look at the memory usage. You can see it's actually relatively low at 363 meg of RAM used with nothing much open. So I've pushed the dock onto the left hand side, but by default it is at the bottom of the screen, like that. And you can see it moves around very easily. You just right click and you can move the location. Very simple. There's a couple of different modes for it. You've got the fashion mode and you've got the efficient mode. The efficient mode takes up the full width or length of the screen and gives you more the uh, feeling of like a Windows 7 start bar, I would call that. So you've got the iconified programs on the top or the left hand side if you had it at the bottom. And you've got the clock and shutdown and the system tools on the right hand side. I quite like that fashion mode. So it grows and shrinks with the number of applications that you have in this mode. So I can just right click and then go to undock. If you want to add a program in then you have to open the application, then right click and select dock. You can see right clicking on the application gives you a few different options depending on what the application is. So right clicking on the terminal gives you a different option here for a quake terminal. Funny they still use that term quake. I mean, how old is quake nowadays? Very old. Right clicking on Chrome gives you the option of loading an incognito window. A feature I rather like is the control panel. It comes in from the right hand side and has a nice smooth animation. That's a real different layout for a control panel or settings manager. Let's select personalization. And it goes to like a phone layout. The actual customization of the desktop isn't that flexible really. It looks like you can add a couple of different themes to it. I can't see any way of adding widgets to the desktop. How rare is that? You get a boot customization. Can't actually name another Linux distro that has that as a default. No. Now remember being told that there is this feature in KDE for that. So yeah, you can get it, but yeah, not a default. Looking into some of these applications, now at first glance this looks like Nautilus file manager, but it is not. It's a fork of Nautilus, I expect. But then it seems to actually have less features than Nautilus. If I right click on the folder, I don't get any option of opening it in a new tab. So there's no tabs in here. If I even middle click, no, it does nothing. The approach for the application layout in Deepin is to shove as much as they can into the window title bar. Try and make best use of vertical space. What happens if I push the applications to the side of the screen? It got resized to halves and the full screen. Ah, can't drag it back down though. So, hey, what's going on? It seems to actually stop responding. That's no good. Oh, okay, get her in the end. Don't know what happened there. Yeah, it's like completely stuck with the file manager open. I've just had a catastrophic speed loss here. Like it literally won't respond anymore. I'm gonna try and reboot this and uh, see what happens because it was running perfectly fine up until this point. So restart. Half the items are missing now in the dock. It did that to me before when I was reviewing the operating system. Let's switch it back. There we go. What the? I was trying to open WPS Writer. Okay, j just stop complaining a minute. So again, we've got an example of how much they've tried to shove in the application title bar. Again, making best use of the space. Oh, what's going on again? It's just stopped responding. This was doing absolutely fine when I was testing it earlier. It's so embarrassing. When I come to record it, it's just not willing to respond. I was looking when the menu appears in Chrome, but it, it does its normal behavior of going on the right hand side. So it doesn't get put in the application title bar, but look, I can forgive them for that. It is not something I would expect deep into actually achieve. So at least I've got a consistent look across the rest of the applications. Let's try and close Chrome. It's started to glitch out on me again. So in terms of opening up applications, you can either scroll down this list or you can start type to finding them. 
Now it only searches for applications, I do believe. Let me just try a document though. No, it doesn't. No, it it's literally is applications only. Open up the music player, deep in music. Okay, I'm not going to play anything, but just right click on the music. You can see we've got multimedia integration. So you can play, pause, next, and previous. So Deepin have provided a number of their own applications. For example, we've got the Software Center. It's one of theirs. Looks a very nice Software Center. Look, we've got the same styling there with the icons at the side of the screen, like the control panel has. Hey, consistency. They've got their own music player, movie player, screenshot tool, image viewer. Look, cloud print and a cloud scan. That's theirs as well. Okay, it's starting to get sloppy on responding again. So. So you open up this multitasking view to get multiple desktops and you can add additional desktops should the four not be enough for you. Yeah. Evidence of Chinglish around. So if I right click and you've got a property rather than properties. You've got trash for recycle bin. But having a note at minor point really, it does seem quite a nice usable desktop. I don't know what was going on with my review here that why it kept glitching out and almost crashing and slowing right down. I don't know. It didn't do this to me when I've reviewed it before. It didn't do this to me during the testing. So why now when I'm recording it? Could be because I'm running it in VirtualBox, but I said it didn't do it before when I ran it in VirtualBox, which is a shame. I was going to say, yeah, it's a really nice desktop. To be fair, it still kind of is. It's a bit limiting on some of the customization, but if you like the layout you're getting, then something to consider. Well, thanks for watching. See you all later.